Hi, Internet! Welcome to the Gradtron YouTube channel, here with another book review. That's right, reading books. Books are cool. What book are we reviewing? Oh man, it's The Golden Compass by Philip Pullman. Um, reductively called Atheist Narnia by people who don't like it. Um... <laughs> So it is the first part of the His Dark Materials series. Uh, the version that I read contains the first three novels. I haven't read the other two yet, but it was originally a standalone book, so I'm going to be reviewing, uh, you know, part one of the series, The Golden Compass. And what I would say is that uh, this is this book is really, really great. I enjoyed it a lot. I started reading it um, last year. And then got caught up in other projects and kept pushing it to the side and said, oh, I'll go back to reading it. And then never got around to finishing it. And then I was looking at some photos from a vacation from last year. Where I was reading the book on the beach. And I'm like, oh, shoot. I actually want to finish this book because it was very good. Um, and it is very good. Uh, I haven't seen the HBO adaption of uh, His Dark Materials. I have seen the, um, I think it's 2007 or 2008 film adaption. I saw that when I was midway through reading it. Um, it was alright. It had some cool stuff in it. Um, but this is my review of part one of the series. Uh, a lot of people don't like this series as a whole because they feel it is um, anti-Christian and pushing an anti-Christian agenda. I haven't read uh, the other parts of the series. I have read spoilers for the other parts of the series. Um, and as far as uh, whether or not I can say it's anti-Christian propaganda, not necessarily. Um... But, you know, that would involve going into spoilers for the later books, which I haven't read yet. Um, but what I would say is I grew up with um, with JRPGs. And uh, one of the tropes in that genre of media is that uh, there is often... You often kill God at the end of those things. And so usually uh, there is a evil church that is lying to the populace and then whatever they claim is God ends up being like an evil monster you have to defeat at the end of the game because it's not actually God it's actually like a demon or something um and so I haven't gotten to the later parts of this series uh but as someone who uh enjoys um those games because I do think they're actually telling uh compelling stories and posing interesting questions um I definitely got a JRPG vibe from this book which makes it very distinct in western literature where most western literature like doesn't even come close to touching the vibe of those stories but even without it getting into like deicide uh it, it definitely had sort of that atmosphere to it. And the this actually what I would say, this is one of the most unique books I've ever read in terms of the um the world building and the way things are established. It's often compared to um Harry Potter or Percy Jackson, but I think that it is um very, very different from those stories and very different from Narnia, where I would say the world that the characters inhabit, at least in book one is very similar to our world, but just different enough where you like you pause your head, you pause yourself and say, huh, every once in a while, because you realize it's mostly our world, but there's enough things that are different where it requires you to pay attention. So, like, um, you know, Oxford is a thing in this world. The you know, United States is a thing. England is a thing in this world. But also, in this world, every uh, human has a companion uh, animal called a demon, um, which uh, is a shapeshifter when they're young, but as they become an adult, it sort of stays in one form. So, like, someone's demon might be a dog, someone's demon might be a leopard, and these creatures um, can talk. They don't necessarily have, like, magical fires. They're not, like, spitting fireballs or anything, but they can talk, and they have to stay close to their humans. And uh, if the human dies, the demon dies... Uh, and vice versa, they're like they're interconnected, and so they're best friends, best companions, and are just extremely close to each other. And if they get too far away from each other, like they'll start to feel ill. Um, so the the human demon relationship is one thing that's different about their world. Um, they also have talking bears um, in their world uh, who wear armor uh, and you know fight each other. So that's another thing that's distinct to their world. Um, some of the countries and political alignments are slightly different. So Norway is Norway, and the like territory is slightly different. Um, uh, you know, there's a heavy reliance on like steam technology, um, and so there there are some things that are like very much a one for one um, match with our world, and so it's very easy to get um, you know familiar with sort of like the way society is generally structured. But there's enough things that are different that make it. Very interesting. It's not like a um, 
an entirely new separate world with a different societal structure you have to get adjusted to. Um, because, you know, often when you just read a, a fantasy book like Lord of the Rings, it's just like everything's completely different. Everything's out the window and you have to you just have to learn everything from the ground up. This sort of hybrid approach is it's different than what Harry Potter does, which is like it's a separate society and it's different than what Lord of the Rings does, which is like it's just a brand new other planet. This is like this weird hybrid mixture uh, that gives it a very distinct tone, unlike most things that I've read. And um, the the way that it's set up is that it's, it's very dark. I would say this is very dark, and uh, there's like some gruesome violence in this, and it gets heavy and creepy in some points. And I would say like, you know, people who thought like the later Harry Potter books were dark, like that's just how they just like open it up with book one like it is dark it is heavy um but the main character is a little girl and so that makes it very distinct because um it feels honest to like the intelligence level of kids and it also makes sense why the main character is a young girl as opposed to a competent adult who would handle the situation potentially better like they actually give good logical reasons that are consistent with characters and world building as to why this character is so important. And so uh, they have a bunch of well-written characters in this. Um, my favorite is actually uh, Yorick uh, Berenson, uh, the polar bear on the cover. That dude is freaking rad. He's an alcoholic bear who has to regain his honor. Um, so yeah, uh, alcoholism is also a thing. <laughs> um so yeah, it doesn't really seem like a children's book. When you look at this cover, um, it looks like the kind of book you would just give to your kid. Um, but it's um, it's a lot darker than that. But by that same token, it um, a lot of kids, like in my generation, consumed darker media, like JRPGs and anime. So it sort of fits in with that kind of tone. And also, this did originally come out in the 90s. So there was something like in the zeitgeist of the 90s that just had, like, a lot of media, like, trusting children to handle more mature content, and also, like, deicide was a thing. Like, more mature content and deicide for all the kids was the trend of the 90s, aside from, um, you know, grunge and, um, you know, Bill Clinton playing saxophone. The 90s, they were wild times. Um, but I would say that it's, um, the author said that he didn't necessarily consider his books for children, he just wrote what he wrote, and I would agree, it's not necessarily, I wouldn't call this a children's book, I would just call this a book that happens to star a child and is maybe marketed towards children, but I wouldn't necessarily call this a children's book. But in the same way that I read, you know, Shakespeare when I was a kid and thought it was great, even though there's a lot of, you know, grisly violence in that, um, I would say I this is sort of the same thing where the quality of the work, the quality of the storytelling and the story being told is so great where... I wouldn't recommend censoring it from a kid. Um, if the if like if the kid is smart enough to handle this book, they're gonna love it and think it's great, and um, you know appreciate the adventure. And there's there's actually uh, there's good lessons within here about um, who you put your trust into, and um, you know whether or not certain people are worthy of trust. And um, you know there's there's a lot of heart to this book, and. Um, the book ultimately does end on a down note where sort of like the quest that the character has been going on the entire time um, is in some ways negated in a number of ways. And so there's there's clever twists and turns. Um, uh, and so a lot of them that uh, the twists and turns I saw coming even before reading the spoilers. And uh, I have a the friend of mine who loaned me the copy of the book actually really, really, like, hated the direction that it went and was surprised where it went. And so, like, we both had completely different reads of a certain character that appears very early on in the book. And I read the character in a very negative light, and the my friend read that character in a very positive light. And then, as we got further into the book, my interpretation of the character was absolutely the correct one, and I just had maybe a better first impression, a better understanding of, like, the cues that... um I was given uh, as a reader because I wasn't looking at it through just the lens of like, here's how it falls into the tropes. I looked at it through the lens of here's the information available to me. What does this likely mean? And so I would say it's not necessarily a very tropey book uh, in terms of like being predictable. It is its own thing. 
And so this is actually a high, high recommendation for me. I I loved it. I'm so glad I got around to finishing it. Um, you know, I am i don't currently have any one particular book on my reading list next. So, you know, part two, uh, The Subtle Knife, might be the next book that I read. But right now, I'm sort of diving into ancient Egyptian history as sort of like my next reading project. Uh, and also uh, watching Final Fantasy XI cutscenes on YouTube because that game is long and uh, I don't have time to grind for like, you know, 300 plus hours and pay a monthly fee for that. So I want to watch the cutscenes. Um, so I might be watching some Final Fantasy XI cutscenes before I go to the Subtle Knife and the Amber Spyglass uh, and finishing the series. But definitely at least the book one uh, was just really, really awesome. High recommendation from me. Yeah, I think it's very cool, and it's definitely made me interested in checking out the HBO adaption of the series. Um, definitely want to do that at some point when I have the time, which I definitely won't. <laughs> um, but yeah, would definitely want to check it out, because I was very, very impressed with this book. So, yeah, uh, if you've read The Golden Compass, uh, let me know in the comments below. Let me know what you thought of it in the comments below. And um, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to do the like and the commenting, the subscribe, and all those good things, and have a good one. Bye, everyone.